Hey there and welcome to the Code Recalls channel. Middleware in ASP.NET Core is something that we are very accustomed to use and it's not a secret anymore. However, when it comes to middleware registration, I think there is a way that you can register middleware that you actually don't know about. So I want to show you everything about this and understand exactly what are the benefits of this new or different way of registering middleware. And to show this off, let's create here a new custom middleware class and we'll call this conventional middleware. So when we want to create a new middleware class, the way that we go about it is something like this. First of all, we have this request delegate that we take in into the constructor. And then we need to implement this invoke async method that takes in the HTTP context and then performs the logic. In our case, we just call the next middleware in the pipeline. Here we also have a middleware extension class where we would add an extension method to register our middleware. And last but not least, we would add the middleware to the middleware pipeline by using this use conventional middleware. Now let me show you where some confusions might come in when it comes to this conventional middleware. We have this very simple dummy service which we add as a scope service and we have a dummy singleton service. Those services just, just have some identifiers so there's nothing fancy about them. And also in the program.cs file we have registered them as scoped and as singleton. Now coming back to our middleware, the problem is that in a regular middleware you cannot invoke or you cannot inject scoped services into the constructor of a middleware. So if in this middleware we need to work both with the singleton service and also the scope service, what we end up doing usually is having the singleton service injected in the constructor and then the scope services we need to inject in this invoke async method. And let's also write some things into the console so that we do something in our middleware. But there's a different way in which we can register middleware in our middleware pipeline. So let's create a new class here and we'll call this class factory activated middleware. And the entire trick here starts with inheriting this i middleware interface. If we go this route, we can still have a constructor here, but we are not obliged to take in the request delegating the constructor. Instead, as part of the interface, this invoke async method takes in the HTTP context and the request delegate itself, and then we can just please simply pass the await.next. I would like to do some experiments with this new middleware, but to do this, we also need to kind of like have this extension method that will register our factory activated middleware. And in the program.cs, one other thing that we need to do that is kind of like specific for this way of working with the middleware when implementing the iMiddleware class is that we need to add the factory activated middleware and we can also add it as scoped or as transient. Obviously, we also need to add this middleware to the pipeline and pay attention to the order because the order is here very important just to demonstrate some stuff. So first we call this use conventional middleware and then we call the use factory activated middleware. And to carry on an experiment, let's go to the conventional middleware and I want to place a breakpoint right when we enter the controller and I would like to also go to the factory middleware and I would also like to place a breakpoint right when we enter the controller even if we don't do any logic in this controller right now. Now let me debug the application. One thing that I have done for the application is that I have configured it to not run the browser automatically, so no request will be created automatically when I run this application. Instead, what I can have here is Postman, and in Postman we can do some calls and then see exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. So we see that we have hit the breakpoint on this conventional middleware constructor. It means that this constructor was called right now when this request came in. Obviously, then there is this logic that's performed when we assign to the fields. But if we then go forward, we see that we also hit the middleware of this factory activated middleware. So we have hit those breakpoints in order or in the order on which we have registered those middleware. And if we just go forward, obviously there will be the response. So you might say, hey, but it's actually exactly the same. The behavior is exactly the same. But let me show you this, if you do another request, you see that we hit only or directly this factory activated middleware. So the constructor of the conventional middleware is not called anymore. And that's precisely the reason you cannot inject scope services or transient services into this constructor of the conventional middleware. Because the idea is that the constructor get called, gets called one time when the middleware is first used 
and then it is a singleton, so the constructor won't be called anymore. Instead, when there is a new request, the invoke async method will be called, but not the constructor anymore. So you create only one instance for the first time you need it, and then the same instance will be reused throughout the entire lifetime of the application. Now, if we go back to this factory-based middleware, we have seen that even for the second or all the sub subsequent requests, we still hit the constructor, which means that this middleware is constructed per a request basis. And this means that we can inject all types of services in the constructor of a factory-based middleware. Like for instance, here we inject both the scope service and the singleton service. And we obviously can do the assignments afterwards. And to be fancy, let's just also perform something and write in the console what we have in these two services. So what happens under the hood? Well, when the application starts up and the middleware pipeline is configured, basically what happens is that ASP.NET Core evaluates when a middleware is registered, if it implements the iMiddleware class like this, then it will defer the instantiation of the middleware to the iMiddleware factory service that is already injected in the DI container. And that's precisely also the reason why we also need to add this service for the factory activated middleware as a scope service to the DI. Coming back to this program file, if, for instance, the registered middleware doesn't implement the iMiddleware interface like it is the case for the conventional middleware, in that case it will follow the regular convention-based middleware registration that will result into middleware being singleton instances and the constructors of them just called once. So when it comes to the differences between the conventional and the factory activated based middleware, there are only two very subtle differences. The first one is that here the factory activated middleware needs to implement this iMiddleware interface and this means that we have kind of like a strongly typed middleware. But then the other subtle difference is that you actually have a different ways of working or interacting with the DI container. Like in a factory based middleware, your piece of middleware will be constructed per request so the constructor will be called every time a new request comes in. And this opens us the opportunity to inject all the services that we need in the constructor of the middleware, no matter if they are singleton, scoped or transient. And this is simply not possible in the conventional middleware and we'll end up having some ugly code like this where some services we inject in the constructor but other services we inject in this invoke async method. Other than this, they are really pretty much the same and they perform exactly the same stuff, they perform exactly the same functionality, so there is no big difference to it. However, when you go to an interview and there is this question if you can inject scope services into a middleware constructor, usually the expected answer is that no, you cannot do that. Because in a conventional middleware, you really can't. But you also need to know that there is this other option of registering middleware, which is the factory-based activation, and in this way of creating a middleware and registering it, you can definitely inject scope services or transient service in the constructor of this one. If you want to get access to the source code, I share all the source code for all the videos with my ambassador members. So if you want to do that, you just need to join the membership as an ambassador level and you will get access to the source code after each video. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you are for the first time here. And if you have any type of question, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.